So we have these new iPhone 15 models and you might be considering getting yourself one. But one thing that's stepping in your way is what storage size do you need? Well, today I'm going to help you out here with my storage guide in for helping you pick the right amount of storage you will need for your new iPhone. Now, most likely when you're getting yourself a new iPhone, you probably got yourself an older iPhone or maybe you might have an Android phone or something like this. And you've probably got a load of, let's say, apps. You might have a load of photos, videos. You might even have some um, music on there, all sorts of bits and pieces that need to be transferred over to your new iPhone before picking the actual storage amount. Because what you need is at least that amount of storage on your new iPhone before picking, you know, a bigger amount or even a smaller amount than what you've got right now. So the best way you can do this is actually going to settings, then scroll down to general, then click iPhone storage, what's about halfway down, and then it might take a minute or so for the storage amount to actually appear. But there we have, you've got the total amount of storage that you are using right now. And as I said, you need to have at least that amount of storage on your iPhone before, you know, taking pictures and videos and putting other new things onto your new iPhone. The other thing to mention here is obviously I can't really show you every single Android version of how to get the storage up. But the best thing I'd recommend to do is have a Google to find out on your model how to find out how much storage you have used on your actual Android device. Because again, you will need to know that amount of storage before picking your new iPhone. Now, with that out of the way, let's now talk about the different storage options that Apple offer. They offer 128 gigabytes all the way up to one terabyte. But of course, the brand new iPhone 15 Pro Max only starts at 256 gigabytes. But let's get started, though, with the 128 gigabyte option. And let's see what kind of user should pick this option. So I would say personally, if you are a person who takes around about five to ten photos a week, and you heard me right there, a week, not a day, then I would consider that this is probably the right kind of iPhone for you, the right amount of storage. And this is about one to two videos, say in 1080p. And I'd probably say probably about one video of 4K was around about a minute long a week. At the end of the day, 128 gigabytes can give you around about 30 to 35,000 photos actually on your device. Imagine that's with nothing else on it. So we're not even talking about the Apple operating system. You know, none of your things to do with your Apple Watch, for example, anything like that. No other apps whatsoever. It would just literally just be the photos dumped on here and the phone would just be useless. It could give you 30,000 photos or equivalently what that could give you is around about 45 hours of 1080p video that you record on your phone. Again, nothing else on it whatsoever, not even the Apple software on it. So you can see straight away, this is why I would say for 128 gigabytes, it's probably for those users who don't really take too many photos or things like this. The other thing I would also say is that if you were, say, downloading one new app a week, what's about 30 megabytes big, because that's about the average size of an app. So this is not one of those hardcore 3D games. This is something like Netflix. Netflix, for example, or say a fitness app for your watch. So if you're downloading, say, one of those apps a week and saying taking, say, about five to ten photos a week, and also, like I said, one to two 1080p videos or one 4K video under one minute, then this should be okay for you. So moving over to 256 gigabytes, this is probably a better model that most people should be picking this time, I would say. On average, this is two to four photos a day. And remember, these are photos that you're going to keep forever, not just snap. You know, I do it myself. I take about 20 photos and then go back in them, delete 19 of them, and keep one. I'm talking about that one. So it's two to four of those photos you're going to keep a day and then on top of that as well you can record probably about one or two 1080p videos up to about two minutes a day again ones that you're going to keep and the same with 4k i would say probably one video of 4k for about one minute again what you're definitely going to keep on your iphone like i said lots of us take multiple videos lots of photos we go back delete loads of them this is what i'm talking about the ones that you're going to keep forever these are the ones that are counted in these numbers Essentially, what this means is that you can store around about 60,000 photos on your iPhone. That's if your iPhone had nothing else on it. So no Apple operating system, things like this. What I just talked about, 128 gigabytes. And also the same for 1080p video. 
you can store around about 90 hours. And then for the 4K video, you could actually store about 30 hours of 4K video. But again, I repeat myself, this would just basically be just a brick, could be a hard drive. There'd be nothing else on it. And at the end of the day, you do have all your apps and things like that. And talking about apps, on average, you could probably store around about 60,000 apps on your iPhone. You've had nothing else on it as long as they were around about 30 megabytes big. So again, I'm talking like Netflix or I'm talking about um, like fitness apps. And when I say Netflix, by the way, I don't mean downloads. I mean, like if you're streaming here, not actually <laughs> downloading videos on it because that would take up space, obviously. But basically, yeah, those kind of apps, you could probably install probably maybe two of those apps sort of a week and this kind of gives you a sort of a good guideline here of what 256 gigabytes will give for you next of all is the 512 gigabyte option and again i would say on average about eight to ten sort of pictures a day that you're going to keep this would give you so this is like i said you might take 100 pictures and you might filter through all of them and keep 10 that's good that's exactly what 512 gigabytes will give you. And on top of that as well, you could probably keep yourself, say, a five minute video of 1080p also on your phone. So again, if you decided to take a long 20 minute video, but you only wanted to keep, say, five minutes of it, cut it all the way down, then this is more than enough for you. If you want to know what that means for apps, well, it means basically you could probably download about three to four apps a week that are around about 30 megabytes big on average. And again, for numbers, if you want to know them, this means you could keep 120,000 photos on your iPhone if there was nothing else on it. So basically, it was a hard drive, no Apple operating system or anything like that. And then also at the same time, that's around about 180 hours of 1080p video or so on here. But again, no photos, no operating system, no apps, nothing. That's all basically we'd be able to fit on here. So you get the idea, you need to share it out. And just in case you wanted to know, for 4K video, this is also 60 hours worth of 4K video that you could actually fit on here. Then for apps, you could fit about 120,000 apps on here. But like I say again, repeating myself loads here, that's if nothing else was on the actual iPhone. Then finally, we actually have the one terabyte option. And this is the biggest amount of storage you can get on an iPhone. Now the iPhone 15 and the 15 Plus don't offer this and only the iPhone 15 Pro and the iPhone 15 Pro Max offer this. So do remember that. But the amount of photos you could take probably on this, you could probably take around about 16 to 20 photos a day and you can keep those. So like I said, if you say took 200 photos, you went out to Disney World for the day and you decide to keep say 20 of those photos, photos but you're going to Disney World every single day in your life and keeping 20 of those photos you get the idea yeah that's going to be more than enough for your phone but then also at the same time as well for video source of footage you could record probably about a 1080p 10 minute video every single day that you can keep so like I said if you recorded say half an hour but cut it down to 10 minutes then yeah that 10 minute segment you could actually keep that and the same with 4k probably about four minutes sort of worth of it and then for apps wise you can download you can imagine about five apps a week that are about 30 megabytes big again that maths for those geeky people out there this equates to 240 40,000 photos you can store on your iPhone if nothing else was on it. No Apple operating system, no other apps, no other videos, nothing. Just literally the storage inside it, you could store that many photos. And then for videos, you could store about 360 hours of 1080p or around about 60 hours of 4K video again on your actual iPhone, one or the other there. And like I said, nothing else on it whatsoever. And just in case you want to know for apps wise, that's about 120,000 apps that are about 30 megabytes big on average each. No big 3D games or anything like that that you can store on here. Now, after saying all these storage amounts, there is also a big caveat here. What I will also say is there is iCloud. Now, I'm not being sponsored by Apple or anything here, but iCloud is super useful. And especially they offer offerings of, say, 50 gigabytes, 200 gigabytes. And then also you've got, say, the two terabyte option, the new six terabyte, and also that new 12 terabyte option. This is really useful. And the great thing what Apple do is that when you take photos and videos, the ones that you've took, say, a week or two ago, they move automatically 
automatically into the iCloud and come off your phone freeing up more space on your phone. So it's quite potential out there that say if you picked your say, I don't know, say the six terabyte iCloud option, you could keep taking loads of photos and videos while still having a 128 gigabyte option of the model of that, because at the end of the day, it's all being stored into the cloud. As long as you keep going to say Wi-Fi areas and you're charging up your phone, say, every day, what most of us do, or every other day, what most of us do, because the battery doesn't last that long anyway, and you're in the Wi-Fi zone, all of those photos, all those pictures will get backed up, and Apple manage it really, really well. And to get those photos and get those pictures back, it's super easy. All you have to do is make sure you've got some phone signal, or you're in a Wi-Fi area, and you can actually just get those photos back onto your phone or download them, and Apple just manage it all for you. It's some kind of magic and trickery how it works, but it's just absolutely brilliant. An example of that is me right now. I'm actually using about 1.2 terabytes of storage actually right now in my iCloud. But for example, I'm on a 128 gigabyte iPhone 14 Pro Max. And with that, I'm actually only using around about 60 gigabytes out of the 128 gigabytes because most of it has actually gone into the iCloud. So definitely, I would say do venture into iCloud because it is a good investment. And if you did lose your phone, you know everything is also backed up into the cloud as well. And with that, guys, it's also time to wrap up this video. So if you have enjoyed watching it, please do press the like button. And also, if you want to hear the latest Apple news reviews and comparisons, make sure you subscribe to this channel and also hit that notification bell. Until next time, guys, I will see you really soon. Take care. Bye-bye.